together today digitally as we come together and we celebrate the wonderful feast of the ascension as we gather together here today we are so gathered in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen friends let us pray almighty god your only son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us Receive us and our prayers for all the world, and in the end, bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Then Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Christ Jesus. Amen. What an amazing story we've been telling, maybe even living these past few months. The story of which I speak is the story that began with the birth of a child, a son a young, to a young virgin. A story which drew many of us from our homes in the darkness of the night hours to be inspired once again by the angel's words and the shepherd's wonder. To maybe catch a glimpse, if even a fleeting glance, 
of that star in the sky for ourselves. To encounter again the hope and the peace which this story renews in our often blighted and shadowed lives. What an amazing story we've been telling and living. A story about a virgin son who grew and was baptized and contended with the tempter through a 40-day fast in the wilderness. But unlike our ancestors, Adam and Eve, the first of our race, he remained faithful, faithful to the Father's will, and three times denied the tempter's advance. What an amazing story we've been telling and living. A story about this obedient one who would gather disciples around himself and speak to them about things of life and charity and forgiveness, about God's mercy and God's justice, about God's compassion and God's grace, about God's steadfast love for his creation, and about God's particular concern and sympathy for those who are weak and those who are often without means or influence. What an amazing story we've been telling and living. A story in which until this past year, we became personally engaged with our palm branches in our hands. A story about one who came riding into Jerusalem, the holy city, to the acclaim and the celebration of most every resident, peasant, and nobleman alike. A celebration which dared to wonder if this donkey-riding visitor might possibly be God's deliverer, God's Messiah, as rumor had it, and as many had hoped and prayed and believed him to be. What an amazing story we've been telling and living about unleavened bread and sweet wine shared by all who were gathered in that upper room. A story of conspiracy of intrigue, of bribery, of nighttime betrayal. A story of fireside denials and cockcrows. A story of injustice and brutality and misery and exhaustion. A story of thorny crowns, of bitter wine. A story of side-piercing swords, of a noble life cut short. What an amazing story we've been telling and living. A story about women out and about as the sun was just beginning to rise. A story about a rock, a heavy rock, a rock way beyond anyone's ability to move. A story about men in white robes, about angels with startling messages. A story about grief turning to joy and death to life. A story about the resurrection of the one who was crucified and pierced, who confronted the illness, the sickness, and the sin of the world, and who rose victorious from the grave by the life-giving, vindicating power of none other than God Almighty himself. A story of life restored and appearances to apostles hidden in locked rooms to a woman who thought him a gardener, to men walking along a road and others in a fishing boat, speaking his word of peace to calm their fears, breaking bread to bring clarity to their confusion and revealing his wounds and his scars to turn their doubt to faith. And now today, this story that we've been telling and living, this amazing story that we've been sharing and hearing, this story that started in a stable behind Bethlehem's No Vacancy Motel, comes to what is certainly a defining moment. The moment that the salvation which the virgin son has accomplished for God's people, the gate that he has opened wide for the flock which he, the good shepherd, has gathered and defends. For you and me, for all whom he loves and calls his own. The moment that this salvation, his salvation, our salvation, 
is revealed to the whole earth. Sung forth, shouted from the housetops, and made known to all peoples, all peoples of God's good and sacred creating. And just as he raises his hands over them, blessing them with the mercies and the gifts of God's steadfast favor and love, he assures them of the mighty power of God that will soon be theirs, the power that will come upon them, the power which will be their strength, their hope, and their confidence, their shield, their protector, and their joy. They stand and look up to the skies as their Lord, who has conquered death and opened the kingdom of heaven for all believers, they watch as he now rises into those very heavens that countless eons ago he created and spoke into existence, which now he opens for his sons and daughters, his brothers and sisters, to inherit, to know as their own promised land, well prepared fine dwelling places. And though he loves them with a depth and a passion of divine and limitless proportion, he departs from them in full confidence that the Spirit, the stirring and life-giving Spirit of God, will lead them into the world, into this amazing story which we, ages later, are still gathering to remember, to celebrate, and to share a story of captives set free, of death and its strong grip released, a story of being loved beyond limits, of joy in heaven over the restoration of a fallen and a wayward life come home, a story of compassion and consolation that speaks of healing and hope that tells us of future and certain destiny. A story of justice, celebrating the goodness and value of every life that God has formed. And a story of hope and peace that even in the midst of challenging days marked by confusion and uncertainty, strengthens us to stand firm and to live confidently in the steadfast and never-failing love of our good and gracious God. Amen.
pray for Christ's holy church, the nations of the world, and for our brothers and sisters in their times of need. We pray for the church, that gathering with thankful hearts, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we may rejoice in the holy fellowship which we share with Christ and one another. We pray that our hymns of praise will give glory and honor to Jesus, our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord. We pray for a renewal of faith, that the Holy Spirit will guide us in witnessing to Jesus and to all that God has done in showing compassion, mercy, forgiveness to all creation. We pray for our bishops, pastors, and deacons in Christ, that they may serve the church faithfully and find joy in their ministries. We pray for leaders of nations and governments, that God will inspire them with selfless courage, the new understanding as they work to lead us in ways that are meaningful and just. We pray for healthcare workers, first responders, and all essential workers, that God will renew their strength, guide them in their work, and protect them from harm. We pray for all who are unemployed and for businesses which are struggling to survive and care for their employees, that God will help them find the resources that they need and explore new opportunities for them to use their gifts. We pray for those who long for wholeness and healing, that they may be surrounded by compassionate caregivers and find their strength renewed. We pray for the faithful departed and for those who mourn their passing, that with them on that last day, we might rise to the joys of heaven and that those who grieve might know the consolation of the Holy Spirit. For all the saints who lit lives bear witness to the goodness of God, we give thanks to the Lord, especially St. Luke, St. Paul, and all the apostles who witnessed the Lord's ascension, and that with them, we too might see and rejoice in the endless glory of the Lord. Into your hands, most merciful Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercies through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, being gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and bring you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, it is good that we have been able to gather together today. A few announcements before we depart. As many of you know, today we are testing out our first soft opening being back together in person. And so we're going to monitor how that goes. And in the weeks ahead, while we're going to continue to have digital offerings while we're starting to come back together, that way everybody is included, we may be continuing some of the recordings just like they are today, or we may even try to move to some live stream opportunities so that you can uh, witness the, the worship happening live as well as recorded. Um, but from the safety of your own home if you're in a vulnerable demographic or if you're not quite ready to come back together in person just yet. But keep an eye out as we'll have some more announcements and we'll be making some uh, decisions as to what way we want to go with that. But whether you're here or whether you're at home, there will be some sort of worship opportunity to connect us for you. 
Also, as we look today, since we have been together in person, our adult forum study of the book of Amos will be gathering together at 10 a.m. via Zoom instead of the usual 9 a.m. That gives us some time to have our worship and reset and get, get uh, back together online for that. Our Wednesday Bible study, we're anticipating two weeks left. This coming Wednesday, we'll gather together on Zoom for our study of Ephesians chapter 5, and then next week we anticipate concluding the book of Ephesians, doing Ephesians chapter 6. That's via Zoom. There's links. Uh, you can get them straight from myself or in the church emails on Wednesday and Sunday mornings. If you have any questions, just let me know, but hopefully you can join us for those sessions as well. Friends, it is wonderful that we're able to be together this morning, and it is always a blessing to connect and to know God's goodness in any way that we're able. God bless you, and go in peace and serve the Lord.